We got this little cottage in 2011 for $113,500. At the time, we put about $25,000 in, and then we've had it rented with cash flow since then. But the catch was that it was the most horrible house you've ever seen, like the bathroom. I think our uh, wives back at the time uh, just ran out crying or vomiting at the same time uh, after they saw this moldy, like dripping, stale bathroom and everything else was busted about the house too. So My buddy Pete, aka Mr. Money Mustache, had helped me with a few projects prior to this and he was instrumental in helping me get this one off the ground. Check out the link in the description to his informative posts about the project's inception. Too. So we did a pretty fast remodel of a bunch of stuff there and then uh, before we knew it, it got rented um, for kind of more than we expected to. Yeah. So 2011 we were both fairly new at doing major carpentry work. Out, and then we both separately and together did a whole bunch of other stuff like fixed up numerous other houses in town and I built one from scratch almost. Check the links around here. Yeah <laughs> and then so we both got a lot better and then when we came back here it was like kind of victory lap we're like whoosh, whoosh, like just doing all this stuff uh, much higher quality than we would have been able to before and really fast. In preparation for selling it we put another forty five to fifty thousand dollars into it including my labor and it's the beginning of 2021 now, we're about to put it on the market, and I'm hoping that we'll, we will get over $400,000. So stick around to the end of the video, see how we did. This is a pretty small house, two small bedrooms, one small bath, 850 finished square feet. So we considered doing a master suite addition, but decided against it, if only because it would have added a lot more to my plate for an uncertain payoff. We figured one of the most important things was to create a lot of nice living space outside the house. The first project was resurfacing the deck, and you can see more details on this in the link above. We used our patented skim coat technique to beautify the jumbled jackassery of old texture. See the link above for more details. After a couple little repairs, we brought in the pros to finish the worn and torn hardwood floors. The garage had a little lean to it based on some old, shoddy construction, so we had to shore that up. Good job. We got new French doors to replace yeah. the crappy sliding door. And again, brought in the pros to re-deck and re-roof both the house and the garage. Eric graced us with his carpenter wizardry throughout the project. We got new Galvalume gutters, and I got to spend some quality time in the tight crawl space, fishing wires and whatnot. Good old Bill ripped out a bunch of stumps and suckers. We got the old manual garage door replaced with an electric overhead door, but we repurposed some of the hardware to make a sliding barn door. In addition to being able to park a car in it now, fancy that, there's enough space that this garage will make a great studio or workshop. 
When it was too cold to work outside, we got to work slathering paint on the walls on the inside. And a couple months in, we were finally ready for landscaping. It was too early for sod, so we prepped the yard with some straw. <laughs> and finally, we shored up the porch foundation. We got it professionally staged, and we were ready to put it on the market. We put it up for $432,000 on Thursday and had an accepted offer for $435,000 by noon on Friday with a backup to boot. A month later, we closed without a hitch. When Pete originally posted about this project in 2011, there were some naysayers among hardcore real estate investors. And maybe in the world of hardcore real estate investment, it didn't look great on paper. But while I want to make money from my real estate investments, it's about more than that. It's about finding a house with character that's seen better days, then turning it into a place I might want to live in. This isn't the most spectacular project we've done, but it had a lot of sentimental value, and it ended up being my most lucrative investment thus far. In the nine years we owned this house, we made over $100,000 in net rental cash flow and saw appreciation of about $250,000. A total profit of over $350,000, around 25% return on investment per year. On top of that, I paid myself about $32,000 for the 700 hours I put into admin, maintenance, and remodel work. My wife and I have been semi-retired now for over a decade. For us, retirement doesn't mean the end of work. It means getting to choose which projects we work on, whether they make money or not. And right now, I have a lot of meaningful and fun projects on the docket. We've been fortunate that some of our projects, especially our real estate investments, have afforded us this freedom. This house, the Leaning Juniper Cottage, was a big step toward making that possible. Congratulations. Nice. Thank you. What you working on there, Pete? Oh, hello. I'm just signing the deal. <laughs> that door's upside down. You know that, right? Freedom. Oh, lordy. Somebody needs some acting lessons.